All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Google Next. Uh, look who are with me, Sachin Gupta, uh, the VP GM at uh, Google. Uh, I would love to know a little about what you're working on, if you can introduce yourself, uh, uh, Sachin. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. So my name is Sachin Gupta, and I look after infrastructure at Google Cloud. I'm the VP GM for Infrastructure and Solutions. Fantastic. Uh, Sachin, I know we were chatting about, you know, obviously distributed cloud, and uh, I would love to know, I'm pretty sure the audience would love to know, uh, what have you been hearing from the customers when, in the world of Gen AI, obviously things have become a little complex, but at the same time, uh, very efficient as well. Yes. So can you share a little about that? Yes, the amount of innovation happening with Gen AI is just absolutely fantastic. Right. And you know, this week we talked a lot about the innovations that we're bringing to our public cloud regions, mm. which is the best place to get the latest innovation, to get the scale for generative AI. Mm. And it serves the needs for a lot of customers. But then you have customers where you know, they have regulatory needs, mm -hmm. uh, compliance needs that don't allow them to put data into a public cloud. Mm. And this could be you know, government use cases, right. regulated industry use cases. It can also be because you can't trust your WAN connectivity, you need to have low latency in manufacturing, right. for example. So many, many different reasons why needing cloud presence on-prem or at the edge is important. And that's why we built Google Distributed Cloud. Mm. And so think of this as a fully managed cloud instance that's an extension of the public region that can sit on-prem. And yeah. I think the magic is that we offer two modes. One is a mode where, think of it as a restaurant, and this is what we're doing with McDonald's globally, Yeah. Uh, where they need to be able to provide services even if the WAN connectivity goes away. Yeah. Uh, and so we survive up to seven days. Mm. And the other model is fully air-gapped, meaning it actually runs the full-fledged cloud with generative AI solutions, and I can talk more about that, um, without ever requiring to be connected to the internet or to Google Cloud. So that's where defense, regulation, uh, regulated industries really love it because they can get the latest services and technology, mm. but keep their data on-prem, keep their data operations on-prem, be fully air-gapped. This is, this is very interesting and uh, very new to me as well, to be honest. And uh, these use cases, obviously, you work with closely with the company, so you have a lot of use cases. But in terms of, uh, you know, the challenges as well, what are the particular challenges that you see uh, the organization, these enterprises kind of feel right now? But at the same time, how do you, you know, uh, solve those things for a lot of CIOs, the enterprise leaders out there? Yes, that's an excellent question. And so what everyone is trying to do is understand all of their data silos, where is this data residing, mm -hmm. how do I bring it together securely, safely, mm. and how do I apply the latest Gen AI, AI capabilities to that? Right. And so with the Google Distributed Cloud, we provide obviously the hardware, the infrastructure as a service layers, but on top of that, we support AlloyDB, which is our vector database for vector search. Right. Then on top of that, we provide AI solutions like translation, because the documents may be in different languages. Languages. Speech to text, because it may be audio calls from you know, a call center, for example, and you need to translate those. Yeah. And uh, optical character recognition, because you might just have documents that you need to convert. And so multimodal input that we can then categorize, create embeddings, put it into the vector database, and then we use Gemma, which is our open source seven billion parameter model, so that you can engage with that data and mm. gain insights through natural language. Exactly. And so it's extremely powerful because there's so many use cases where I must be able to search, just like you can search on the public internet, Right. I need to be able to search on my own data knowing that no one else has access to access. it, it has never left my premise. Mm. And the applications are just enormous. Even just predicting when something's going to fail, uh, understanding if I'm compliant with something because I'm building a new product, drug research, sharing data, mm. keeping patient data confidential, energy infrastructure, optimizing right. for sustainability without fear of cyber attack because it's a fully air gap solution, right? right? That's a huge, huge advantage. Uh, and then I think the, in the connected use case, getting those capabilities, but being able to do it at hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of locations, yeah. and operationally doing it in a simple way, it's just magic. It is, definitely. Thanks for those insights, because I feel that is one very you know, important thing for the enterprise leaders out there, that they want to be very secure when they're kind of going out and searching. Very uh, secure, they need to be able to check all the boxes. Boxes. For, right, for what they are required to be compliant with. Yes, exactly. One quick question in terms of a little bit 
for our enterprise leaders out there who are wanting to get started with AI, they are, like in 2023, 2022 were the years I feel where they actually started implementing already. But now it's about scaling as well. Yes. So what what are your advice? Like, what's your advice to them? Uh, anything? Any best practices that they should follow? Yes, and I think uh, you're absolutely right. You were going from experimentation to real applications. I think we talked about it as agents of all kinds mm. built on AI. And I think, you know, our objective is that the customers can focus on their data, their use cases, the outcomes they're looking for the innovation they want to drive, right. the experiences they want to improve, and not worry about the technology stack that they must use. Yes. And so offering a complete solution, you know, hardware, software, infrastructure, fully managed, database, data management, AI, you know, Vertex AI services, models, making sure every layer is open. Mm. Because the other thing they don't want to do is, hey, I buy this, great, but now I'm stuck. No, every single component there, every layer is fully open as well. Mm. And so getting a complete solution, but knowing that it's open so that you can get out of the business of managing infrastructure right. and are really just getting the value out of AI, mm. that's, that's what customers are looking for. They, they want to be able to move as quickly as the technology without having to deal with all the complexity that could come with it. Yeah, no, I think uh, 100%. That's something, you know, obviously uh, all the enterprise leaders uh, also aim for. Yes, uh, enterprise, public sector. Public uh, sector, uh, yeah. Especially, yes. Yes, for sure. Uh, these are great insights, uh, Sachin. Uh, one last question, I'm pretty sure our audience would also want to reach out to you, learn more about uh, what you're doing in the space, and be updated with the content that you share as well. So where can they do that? Is LinkedIn a good place? Or? Uh, LinkedIn is probably the, the best place, and uh, of course, YouTube. YouTube, awesome. So, thanks for this, uh, Sachin. Thanks for the conversation and thanks for visiting the Robert Show. We'll keep the conversation going. And uh, it was such a pleasure to chat with you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.